Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. Well, believe it or not, all of the engine work that we did on the intake valves, rebuilding the carburetor, and so on and so forth, did absolutely nothing for the idle of this engine. It still idles like, well, it stutters a little bit. Every once in a while, it'll just run along and boom, 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 you know, kind of like that. It's really annoying. But once you give it the gas and get on down the road, it runs really good. And it'll light up the tires at the red light, believe me. Well, anyway, we've got to do a little more troubleshooting on this engine. I suspect that we have some sticky exhaust valves. And up next, I'm going to show you why I believe that is the case. All right, we're going to show you what sticky exhaust valves look like on a Cadillac 472. notice how the paper is being sucked back into the pipe every once in a while. It's not supposed to do that. And yes, my fingers are getting hot. It's not, see there, it's slapping, it's slapping. It's not supposed to do that. That is because the exhaust valve is remaining open a little bit during the intake stroke because the exhaust valve is sticking. At least one of them is. One, maybe two, I don't know. We're going to have to find out though. All right, up next, I'm going to show you what it should look like on a different vehicle. All right, so for comparison, this is another General Motors big block engine. This is a 496 and a pickup truck. And we're going to use our paper. All right, you'll see that there is a steady pulsating stream with no tendency to suck or draw the paper back into the exhaust pipe. All right, we're getting ready to do a compression test on the 472. Uh, we've got the throttle tied open with some tie wraps. We have the coil disconnected to prevent ignition. I have all of the spark plugs removed and the spark plug wires tucked out of the way. Uh, what we're going to do now is try to figure out which exhaust valves are sticking. We're going to analyze the compression of each cylinder and see if we find one that has a problem. All right, we're starting out with cylinder number two. And we're looking at 164 pounds. Let the pressure off. And we will move to the next cylinder. But first, we're going to write this down. We're going to continue on with the driver's bank. We're doing number four. And we are looking at 156. All right, we are continuing on with the driver's side with number six. And that one is, I'm going to call that 148. We call that one 146. All right, so far we have 164, 156, 148, 146 for the driver's side bank. Let's move on. Uh, looks like Hurricane Sally is, or what's left of her, is starting to move into the area. Hopefully all we'll get is a bunch of rain with no wind or tornadic activity. All right, so here are the uh, results. The passenger side bank, it's really nice. It's spot on. There's only a nine point difference between the lowest and the highest on the passenger side bank. The driver side bank is eh, not quite so good. Uh, number two and number four, they're okay. Uh, number four falls within the 10% range. Uh, it falls 12 points lower, with 12 PSI lower than the 
the highest one, which is number five. So that's fine. Number four is fine. However, number six and number eight are not fine. They are 20 and 22 PSI lower than the maximum press, uh, pressure we observed over here. So we're going to inject a little bit of uh, oil into these cylinders and redo the test and see what the new, new numbers are. We're going to try to figure out, okay, do we have piston ring wear or do we have a valve problem? All right, I've got a little bit of old, uh, some of this mysterious oil in my, uh, my oil can. We'll give each cylinder a couple of shots. All right, in retrospect, I probably should have used a rubber hose for that, but oh well. All right, let's redo our test. We'll start with number six. All right, so that one's a little higher. It's right at 150. Of course, anytime you introduce oil into a cylinder, it's going to be a little higher. But this was only two PSI. As a matter of fact, it's just shy of 150. I'm going to call it like 149 and a half. It's, you know, it's right in that neighborhood. If it was piston rings, an increase of a one and a half PSI is nothing. It's not piston rings. Yeah, there's virtually no change. All right, we're looking at 156. So that one was significantly higher, 10 PSI higher. All right, let's discuss our findings. Uh, the passenger side bank all looks good. Largest difference is 9 PSI. Cylinder number 5 is the highest at 168. Uh, the driver's side bank, cylinders number 2 and 4 look fine. Uh, they are 4 and 12 PSI. Uh, below the below number five, which falls well within 10%. Uh, number six and eight are problematic. Uh, number six is at 148, uh, which is just outside the 10% range. 11.9, 12, or around 12% 12 uh, difference. So that's it's outside the range, but it's not like you know it's not horrible. Same same way for number eight. 13. I guess you know yeah it's outside the range, but is it horrible? Mm, maybe not. I did go back and uh, perform test number two for six and eight. So for test number two, for test number two was wet. I put some marble uh, mystery oil in the cylinder. So for test number two, for number six, it was virtually unchanged. So the, uh, it, made, it made no difference really. And then for number eight, however, I put a little oil in the cylinder and it increased from 146 to 156, a difference of 10 PSI which brought us into the 7% range. So, you know, the 156 is 7% uh, down from, uh, from number 5. So, mm, you know, I don't know. Number 8 might have a little cylinder wear. I'm not sure. Or maybe, you know, maybe that mystery oil spraying all over the place in there, got all over the, all over the valve seats and, uh, you know, tightened them up and uh, helped us out a little bit. So it remains to me, in, in my mind, these numbers are not that far off. They're not crazy. You know, we didn't see increases in pressure of say 30 or 40 or 20% or something like that. Uh, we, there was no drastic huge changes if you, if you get my meeting. So I think we still have some homework to do. Uh, I think the engine is healthy, but in my opinion, I, I think we have some valves that are uh, a little flaky on number six and number eight. So that is going to be our focus probably in, an, in a future video. Hey folks, that's all for this short little vlog. I appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. And keep on the lookout for new videos where we're going to be digging into the 472 engine.